Let us praise the Lord that we are here. And my wife and I are so thankful for your prayers. I was not feeling well for four days because I think I was over fatigued. That's what the, my, my friends told me. After the retreat, we just finished our retreat last week, long weekend, here at the Shawnee Lake. And you know, the, so I'm still working because so far I'm not a full time. So the conference allows me to work. So I'm working and then I have two churches, and, but pardon me if I cannot come most of the time because also I'm not feeling well. And then after the uh, retreat, we had another meeting in the afternoon of Sunday for the nominating committee. So imagine four days of retreat and then we had a one-year plan for the church. What would be the vision, the plan for the church next year for the 2023? And after that, Saturday evening, I felt that I'm not feeling well. So after the meeting committee, the following day on Sunday, someone called me that there's an emergency. It's around 4 o'clock until 8 o'clock in the evening. So one of the members of the church called me, Pastor Benji, we need you to come here immediately to our house because we have and important. So I went and after I visited this family, I went home and when I arrived home, this is the conclusion. I'm not feeling well. So thank you for your prayers today. And friends, our, our scripture reading was found in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. So Christ himself gave the apostles, number one, apostles. Second, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. For what purpose? Why God entrusted these people in the remnant church to equip, according to the apostle Paul, to equip his people for works of service. Works of service. That is why our church officers are volunteers and members as well. Because of the love that we gave to our church. To equip his people for works of service. So that the body of Christ, we are all the body of Christ, may be built up. Until we all reach unity in the faith. That's a wonderful word. Unity in the faith. King David says, Behold how good and how blessed it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. The seventh day of the church will not become successful if there are no leaders, faithful leaders at the church. If there are no, uh, God entrusted them to be a good followers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. What else? Unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. And become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we open your word, Lord, empower us and guide us our thoughts. Help us to understand what we're going to study today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A leader must be a good father. A member must be also a good follower of Jesus Christ. That's the body of Christ. That's the meaning of Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians. If we claim that we are son and daughter of Christ, then by the grace of God, we will become a good follower of Jesus if the Bible 
is the main reference of our life. The strength of any organization is the direct result of the strength of its leaders. Weak leaders equals weak organizations. Strong leaders equals strong organizations, according to Jen Maxwell. In his book, Developing the Leaders Around You, in pages. Folks, the church got appointed to be the followers and leaders of our denominations. We praise the Lord that we have a humble leaders of our church, that they are the one used by God, including the followers of the church, is spreading the gospel in all the world. That's why we are here, friends. We are here, we are embracing the faithfulness of the Lord through the study of His Word. Leadership qualities that make Jesus such an effective leader. Number one, we must have a spiritual leadership. Since we were facing that year 2023, we are nominating or selecting or appointing officers of the church. And God bestowed the knowledge to each members who are leading the church, especially our leaders. Our main leader of this church is Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Jesus Christ is the main leader of the church. And he entrusted the people who runs the church, his people to run the church. And one quality is to be a leader is a spiritual leader. Because your members were looking at our leaders. Mm -hmm. If you are not spiritually equipped by the word of God, you cannot run the church. This is an encouraging verse of Apostle Paul. Very early in the morning, when Jesus, when it was dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Our weapons to encounter devil is prayer. Leaders and members, we encourage to pray for our leaders of the church, for our officers of the church, instead of pointing fingers, looking for their weaknesses. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for our world church leaders. Because they are entrusted by the word of God. Jesus appointed them to become the leaders of his church. Luke 6 verse 12, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. We all know that when Jesus was here on this earth, his weapon to attack the warfare of the devil is prayer. Prayer. Friends, this is an encouraging verse to all of us. Even, even though we're not leaders of the church, but the most important is to pray. Contemplate the word of God and pray for our leaders, for the officers, for our elders, for the deacons, for the youth in our church. In order for us to be a progressive church, that we can aim, we can set our goal, we can reach our goal, our vision. Because if we are united in Christ, we will reach our goal in the church. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 12 verse 8. Romans chapter 12 verse 8. Gospel workers, page 350. The work of God in this earth will never be finished until men and women unite their efforts together with those members, ministers, 
and church officers. The pastors cannot do it. The elders cannot do it. We must do it all in order for us to reach our goal as a church. Right? Second, friends, I'm going to share to you this morning is caring leadership. We have to take care of our families, our fellow members. We have to encourage them. You can do it. Participate in the activities. Jesus met the needs of the people. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Compassion, the caring of our members of the church. If you are leaders, giving thanksgiving to the Lord, pray for them. Extend your loving arms to them. Instead of putting down, lift them up. Tell them God loves you. And the church was there to assist you if you need help. That's the word compassion. Where Jesus had compassion to the people while he was in this earth. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed. When we went, when I was doing the time when I was at Berlin University, there's a student came from another country and he is an international student. And he came to our class. He's begging. He needs help because he's alone. His parents were far away. They don't have, he, don't, he doesn't have relatives. His relative, his friends is only his students, his fellow students and friends in the university. He boldly say, I need your help. I'm here standing before you. I'm not ashamed to ask for help. And one of the students stood up and said, brother, even though I don't have money, even, even though I don't have enough food on my table, but you are welcome to come to my room and stay with me. And I will give you what the Lord has provided. That's a compassion. He felt the deed of his fellow students. And afterwards, the student emailed sent an email to other students and you know the blessings of the Lord poured up to help the students who need help. Friends, compassion is very important in our church. The servants of Christ are not to act out the dictates of the natural heart. They need to have a close communion with God. They need to fix their eyes upon His loveliness. This is what the desire of ages, page 353 said. As I have said, the church members, officers, we cannot do it on our own. We need the helping hands of our fellow believers in Christ. We need to have a close communion with Jesus. Lord, I need you. I need your help. How can we resolve this problem in my church? I need your assistance, loving Father. Help me. Help me to settle this kind of troubles in the church. We need to have a close communion with Jesus and look our eyes upon him. Third, the empowering leadership. Jesus poured his life into empowering the leaders who would succeed him. This is why we have to train. We have to give our skills, share our skills, our, our knowledge to our fellow members. Because if we are not around, those members that we teach them, they are the second liners. They are the one who believes the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
If I was the train in our church, I wasn't here in front before you. I thank God for the church family that they encouraged me. Even though I may not be able to say, I may not be able to say a beautiful preaching, but those members, those officers, when I was young, they encouraged me, you can do it, Benjamin. You can do it. Sabbath school emphasis, leading the youth, they encouraged me, you can do it. Let us encourage our young people, our church members, in participating in the church activities. Mm -hmm. Lift them up, pray for them, love them. Empowering leadership is important in our church. Mm -hmm. Encouragement. Yeah. Tap the shoulder and embrace if we can and encourage them. Friends, brothers, and sisters, you are needed in the church. If they say, I cannot do it, you can do it by the grace of God. One member, when I was in the Philippines, he told us, I don't have I skills. I don't need to be an officer of the church. The elder said, Do you know how to smile? Yes, I know how to smile. Then that's your gift. That is your gift. She was so encouraged. And after the following year, she accepted the position to be a greeter. She was a greeter in the church because of her smile that wins over to the visitors and friends who are visiting to the church. Even you can smile, that is your gift. That's your skills that God has given. Even if you don't know how to pray, but if you have a smile, the people will love it. It means if they're smiling, Faces in the church, that church was a welcoming church. Welcoming church. Empowering leadership. Jesus went up on the mountainside and called him. Those who wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive up them. When Jesus was here on this earth, he appointed the 12 disciples, and these 12 disciples is scattered around the world, sharing the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the salvation to all the people, the confessions, the faith in Jesus. And the result of those 12 disciples that they are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. The result of that is us. We are here now, embracing the love of Jesus, the gospel of those 12 disciples who share the message of God. Amen. And after the 12, he appointed the 70 others also. They went two by two. I was involved in literature evangelism for four years. Even though the people didn't buy a book, but if you give them, if you hand them a pamphlet, they love to accept. Share the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people. Last Wednesday, I had the opportunity to do a Bible study one of the Canadian guys who were in different walks of life. He has different vices in his life. He engaged in illegal activities in Victoria. And he met a guy who was a Seventh-day Adventist. And while they were starting to share each other, this guy who was a Seventh-day Adventist, contacted me. And then he said, Pastor, I have a friend who is very interesting to 
to learn the Word of God. So I met him, and we had a Bible sharing with each other. I visited him in the house last Wednesday. And when we had this kind of Bible study, he shared his experience to me. He said, he told me that, Pastor, maybe the Lord will not accept me because of the things that I have done in my life. I told him, you know, brother, Jesus loves you. Whatever sins that you committed, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse us your all unrighteousness. So he started to ponder and said, thank you. While we're having a Bible study, he confessed everything in his life. And further to our study, he learned about the love of Jesus. We studied about the scripture. The following day, Thursday, he was interested, and then he said, come back again, and we will study again. So I went yesterday, and then we studied together for the second time until tomorrow, a lot yesterday, Friday, at 1.30 in the afternoon. We studied together. And right there and then, we, he know that the seventh day of the week is Saturday, and this is the day that the Lord has blessed, sanctified. Because we study about the Sabbath, because he kept on asking, why Christians worship the other day instead of Sabbath? So I explained to him. After our Bible study, he called his boss, and he said, Sir, can I ask that I want to spend in the church during Saturday. I will not work anymore on Saturday. Could you please give me Monday to Friday and Sunday to work? And his boss said, yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. And he told me, Pastor, from now on, I will go to church. Amen. This is the powerful message that instilled in the mind of a young gentleman. Even though he messed us his life, but if we come to Jesus, friends, boldly, whatever sins that we committed, God is a forgiving God. Come to him. Look to Jesus and be saved of the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. That's what Isaiah said. God doesn't ask us to do in our own strength the work before us. He has provided divine assistance for all the emergencies to which our human resources are unequal. He gives the Holy Spirit for you and me to help and restrain, to strengthen our minds and purify our hearts. We cannot do it without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, friends. This gentleman, he cried when he confessed, when he shared to me his life testimony. But because of the Word of God that he started to read and study together in the Bible, he said, thank you that I know the real truth. Amen. I went to different denominations and I scattered everything. I squandered my life, but now, because of our study, I firmly believe, according to Him, I will follow Christ. Amen. I will follow yeah. Christ. Because of the privilege and authority, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 5, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves. Measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part 
has a special function. That was the body of Christ. The church of different offices. And we voluntarily and gladly accepted our position because God entrusted to you this office. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body, we are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Praise the Lord! We belong to each other. We have different skills, hobbies, and gifts. But God entrusted that gifts to you and me. Let's use this. Use this one in a humble way. Serve God diligently. Serve up leadership. Jesus gave his life in service and sacrifice. Jesus gave his life in service and sacrifice. When we were in Calgary, Saturday morning, early in the morning, there was a big fire happened in our village, in our street. And the officers knocking the doors of each houses to wake up because that's four o'clock in the morning. Big fire, four houses were burned. And one of the members said, maybe I cannot help because I'm going to church. I cannot help because I'm going to church. Your streets, the houses were burning and then you're going to church because you have a part. The people need help. We are servants of God. I went there to help those families that their house were burning. Servant leadership, friends. It doesn't mean that Saturday and you have a part in the church and you will not help. Go to the PRP person. Help them. Forget your part in the church. Go to Him, assist them, extend your loving arms to them because they need help. We are servant of Jesus Christ. We are servant of Jesus' life, Jesus Christ. Jesus gave His life in service to others. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give His life as a ransom for men. Jesus said, I am among you as one who serves. Take the teachings that you hear me. This is the counsel of Apostle Paul to young Timothy. To young Timothy. Young people, take the teachings of this Bible that you hear. Proclaim in the presence of many witnesses. And entrust them to reliable people. Who will be able to teach others also? This empower leadership, servant leadership. If you have skills in playing different kinds of instruments, teach, transfer it. Because if you are not around, those members will take over. Transfer of skills. I would like to present to you how our Adventist church would progress. Summary of the statistics. Because of the entrusted leaders that God put this church, we have 95,000 churches all over the world. Companies, 72,000. Church members, 21 million. More than 21 million. Total accessions, 1.69. This is in summary of 2020. How the church grew 
how the worldwide church of Seventh-day Adventist grew. The church is in 2020, 92,000 compared to 2021. It increased. Companies, 72,000 compared to, to 2021. Church membership, 21 million, more than 21 million. Total accessions, 803,000. Ordained ministers, active full time and part time, is 20,900 plus. Total active employees, full time and part time, casual, 322,000. Mission to the world, the countries and areas of the world as recognized by the United Nations, 235. Countries and areas of the world, look at this, where the Seventh-day Adventist function, which Seventh-day Adventist work is established, 212 out of 235. We have 212 countries that there is a Seventh-day Adventist church. Language, language is used in the Seventh-day Adventist publication and oral work. We have 13 divisions, union conference, union missions, churches, church missions, local conferences, and local missions. Because of the leaders entrusted by the Lord to run His church. The conclusion of our study today is found in the book of Matthew 28, 9 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe what I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you until the end of the world. Friends, if we don't have a faithful, humble leaders of the seventh day in the church, it will not grow. But because this is the church of God, this is the church that God established, He point, He elect, He put, He placed the persons entrusted for this church. That's why we are growing. Praise the Lord. May the Lord glorify. May His name be glorified because of you and me, because of our world leaders, because of the members of the Seventh day Adventist Church, because of the love of Jesus, because of the gospel of Jesus Christ entrusted for this church.